when you go on the job market, you're going to find that you have to write a variety of statements, right? In addition to a cover letter, you may be asked to write one or more of the following, a research statement, a teaching statement, and possibly a diversity statement. What are these different statements and how do you write them in ways that are original yet meet the parameters of the job application? That's in this video. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Hall from teachingacademia.com and I'm all about giving you the tools you need to navigate academia to make your best impact. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get notifications because I put out new videos each week. So today we have a question about the kinds of statements that go with a typical job application packet in academia, right? And the question focuses on how do you write things like a research statement, a teaching statement, a diversity statement, how do you do so in a way that is original, but still with them in the parameters of what employers are looking for? So first of all, we could spend multiple videos on each kind of statement. What I'm going to do is give you an overview, briefly tell you what the purpose of each statement is, what, what, is, what are these things, and then give you some quick tips for how you can think about making it original, um, but also you know, staying within the confines of what it is that search committees are looking for. So let's start with the research statement. So the purpose of the research statement from a search committee view is to understand you as a researcher. Do you have a clear idea of who you are, what you're studying and where you're going? Okay, so in a research statement, you wanna make a clear statement almost immediately in that first paragraph on what it is that your research addresses. What is the problem that your work addresses and why is that focus? And then how have you done that, right? That's when you can talk about your dissertation. That is when you can tell us where you're headed next. Um, if somebody asks you for your five-year plan, fine, give them your five-year plan, but that's not something that I would um, put into an application um, in a research statement unless I was asked to because you don't really know what's going to happen in five years. But, okay, um, having a clear focus on this is what my research is on, this is why it's important, this is what I've done, this is where I'm going, that's going to make your statement strong, okay, and that's going to make it stand out. It might not seem to you like it's super original what I just told you, but really what we're going for, the, for that is concise focus to the point, okay. Now, a teaching statement. This is allowing the search committee to understand your philosophy, right? Are you going to be a good fit for the programs and the students and where we're headed as a university kind of a thing? So I would really focus on what are the principles that guide your teaching? And I would keep it to three. Like you might have more, but I would, what are your top three principles that undergird the ways that you plan, the ways that you make uh, instructional decisions, ways that you interact with students. What are those, right? This is really your teaching philosophy. So what are these principles that guide your teaching? How do they inform your teaching? What do they look like in practice? And then what are you working on as a teacher, right? Sort of like what, what kinds of questions do you have? What do you strive for in self-improvement? That is not a weakness, okay? Um, we can always improve as teachers. We should always have something that we're working on. We should always have a problem that we're sort of bringing to the table and thinking about in our teaching, okay? So what is it that you are working on? So for example, uh, one of the things that I'm working on is how do I increase engagement um, with my students in online classes, okay? And also, as a side note, I'm also working on how do we make online classes more feel more um, like a community, become more community um, centered and based. So if I was going to talk about what I was working on and I wouldn't present it as I stink at having my classes look and feel like a community, but I would present it on, I'm really interested in how we can create online spaces that where students are supporting one another, interacting with instructors in ways that look like communities. Okay. And then I would give some examples of that. All right. So that lets the committee know, Hey, I take my teaching seriously and I always have something in the back of my head that I'm trying to work on and make better. Okay. Now, a diversity statement. Diversity statements are relatively new to the game in terms of um, materials that you might be asked for, and not everybody's going to ask you, well, not everybody's going to ask you for any of these, okay? But it is possible that you will see research, teaching, and diversity statements required for even a single position. But across the three, diversity statements are relatively new. And the purpose of these statements is really to, to sort of see, you know, do you have professional skills? Do you have um, experience? Do you have a desire or a willingness to engage in activities that are going to enhance, you know, campus diversity or the college diversity and equity efforts, okay? Um, this is really an opportunity for you as an applicant to talk to the search committee about what makes you unique. What 
distinct experiences do you bring to the table that can really help uh, help the campus help the college or help a specific program with their diversity and equity efforts how do you do that so um consider first of all what story that it is that you have to tell now i'm going to tell you full disclosure diversity statements came after i had already had have already had a job i've never had to write one okay but when i think about my story um, I am a first generation college student. I had particular struggles because I was a first generation college student. And at the time when I was when I was going to college, being first gen wasn't anything that anybody thought really about that much. Okay, so I just sort of had to navigate that and I didn't always do so well. And sometimes I got I did well, but I got lucky. Okay, so I would probably tell the story of being from a first generation, uh, being a first generation college student where I came from a family that valued education, saw an importance in it, um, but beyond the fact that they were like, you need to go to college, we'll pay your tuition if you, you know, I had to go locally, but we'll, you go to college, we'll pay your tuition, and that's it, the rest is up to you, okay? So <laughs> I had to navigate that, right? That's sort of, that's a, a piece of my story, right? So think about what, what kind of experiences do you have? They give you insight into issues that um, campuses are going to be struggling with around diversity and equity efforts and highlight those. Okay. Now, um, I think about specific things that you have done to help students from underrepresented backgrounds. So before I went to graduate school, I was a middle school teacher, so I could draw from that. Okay. During my time as um, a doctoral student, I would say, you know, I probably really didn't do a lot. I think at the time, some of that's contextual um that that just wasn't what was on the radar of most universities at the time so those opportunities and experiences weren't there that's changed now so think about what kinds of experiences have you had both in and outside the university that help you um think about you know what have you done right that sort of helps you um have understandings for what it means to help students from underrepresented backgrounds my teaching as a middle school teacher my experiences with that gave me some insight that i could draw on there okay um, and then another tip is think about if you've been involved with any programs that support diversity and equity. So recently I changed jobs and this is something that I did not have to write a diversity statement, but I did highlight this. I worked in the Upward Bound program, Upward Bound, and I did it for a summer. Um, Upper Bound program focuses on first generation college students and each university that has it has to decide different ways that they're going to do it. Um, I worked in the summer with um, rising seniors and so they were between their junior and senior year in high school and I taught English. So I did that, you know, for, I taught two classes of English every day, four or five days a week um, for, I can't remember, six weeks or eight weeks. And so, I mean, I, when I applied for the job that I'm in now, I talked about that, okay? I talked about being able to go back and work with children, not children, but adolescents um, that were gonna be first generation. I was first generation and I talked about how we worked together. So you might have opportunities with Upper Bound. I also continue to collaborate with Upper Bound after that experience. So you might be involved with McNair Scholars. I know in the job that I'm in now, um, I'm starting to interact. I've only been here a year, but I'm starting to interact with McNair Scholars. I'm starting to do things um, with that program a little bit. So anything that you've done, okay, that sort of sh um, shows how you've been involved in supporting diversity and equity. It could be at the institution, but it doesn't have to be, okay? Um, it could be, you know, outside the institution as well. I think any anything that you bring to the table there um, is going to be valuable. All right, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all of my videos. And while you're at it, head down to the comment section and let's talk about these statements that you have to write. Where are you struggling? What do you think is working well? What are things that you what are things that you've heard about what makes a quality statement or what makes a bad statement? Let's get some of those rumors out and and are they true or not? Let's talk about them. Um, and let's have a discussion so that we can help each other move forward with your academic journey.